Welcome back, familiar to Northside LD and Kadamba. Make sure you're hitting the bell notification. Make sure you're doing all that good stuff. Make sure you keep smashing the like button. We're dropping news videos every 8 a.m. every day, 8 a.m. So make sure you're doing all that good stuff. Make sure you're hitting the bell notification. We've got Alexander Isak being linked to Arsenal. Newcastle seem like they're getting into the deal and they're trying to block Arsenal, making a move for Alexander Isak. Now, the talk has obviously been around Isak or Gyokaris or Ivan Tony. I rate, I rate this guy. I think he's a good striker. There isn't many elite strikers. Let's keep it real. There isn't many elite strikers out there in the market at the moment. And he's definitely a good option. A good option. When you look at our recruitment within the Premier League, some of it is, listen, we've we got Zinchenko. I wouldn't say Zinchenko was amazing. Um, I think where it's about time that we move away from Zinchenko. But Jesus, he was decent, but was never going to be our main striker. Let's just keep it real. Let's just keep it real. He's never going to be our main striker. He's not a great goal scorer. He came out himself and even said when he was in international break with Brazil that he's not a goal scorer. You know, if we was going to have Jesus, we always needed a clinical goal scorer. And Isak is more clinical than Jesus. He is more clinical and we needed a goal scorer. And I've been saying that since we got rid of uh, Aubameyang, we needed a striker that's going to bang. We need a striker that's going to bang at least 20 plus goals a season. We need a striker like that. So we're being linked with Alexander Isak. Make sure you're smashing the like button. Make sure you're hitting the bell notification so you're always notified every time I drop a video. Now, let's go into the article surrounding Isak and Arsenal and the talks of Isak coming to Arsenal. Newcastle have informed Alexander Isak that they are considering selling him this summer. It's expected he won't push for a move. Now, he may not push for a move. Normally, players do this to try and help themselves in terms of how they are viewed by their current fan base and club if the move falls through. So this is something normal. We see this all the time. Let's keep it real. You see this all the time. They will say they, they're not going to push for a move. Respectfully, Isak would want a move from Newcastle to Arsenal. At this current time, we are a better team. At this current time, we are in the Champions League. So listen, we haven't got over the line. We're not we're not champions of England. We're not champions of Europe. But if he comes to Arsenal, we already know it's it's bet it's a better look. Let's just keep it honest, and that's without disrespecting Newcastle because I like Newcastle. I think they're a good team, but they're a team yet to kick on and be consistently in the Champions League, consistently title contenders, and they're not that at this moment in time. Um, Newcastle United's Alexander Isak reacts after they concede their third goal during the English Premier League. Um, let's go a little bit down. What's these men saying here? Uh, Mark Bruce uh, reports from Court Offside that Newcastle United have held talks with Alexander Isak um, considering a summer sale. It's now expected that Isak won't push for a departure this summer and despite links uh, to Arsenal. The Gunners are now looking at other targets. Fabrizio Romano recently confirmed that whilst Arsenal appreciate Isak, a transfer looks difficult this summer. John Cross from the Mirror has previously reported that Isak won't be joining Arsenal despite monitoring the player in the past. Um, they're saying that he's, he's valued at around £120 million. Now, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Let's keep it real. It's a lot of money, but at the same time, we know that the striker market, there's 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 not a lot in the striker market in terms of elite quality. Is Isak world-class? No, but he's definitely uh, a better goal scorer than the strikers that we have. Let's just keep it real. Um, it says here that back in April, initial reports of Arsenal interest in Isak were met with news that Newcastle wanted to offer him a new contract. The striker is already under contract with his current club until 2028. <clears throat> but his new deal contained a clause reducing his wages up to 20% if Newcastle miss out on the Champions League.
Given Newcastle didn't manage to sneak into the top four, Isak's wages will now drop, but the club hope to appease him by offering him a new pay rise. Listen, when it comes to money, Arsenal can offer more than Newcastle because of FFP. At the end of the day, we can offer him more money. We can offer him Champions League. We can offer him going head-to-head, -head, um, trying to win the league against Man City. We haven't got over the line, but we have you know, been in title races now for two years straight. So there's things that Arsenal can offer Isak and we need to tempt the player. At the end of the day, we need to tempt him. Isak looks to be a great option for Arsenal with 25 goals in 40 games this season at the age of 24 and an existing relationship with Arsenal star player Odegaard from their time together at Real Sociedad. Listen, we need to use everything that we can to get him over the line. Is he my number one choice? No, I'd still prefer... Ivan Tony, I'll be completely honest. I've always said that I prefer Ivan Tony, but I would definitely put Isak in second place. Definitely put him in second place. When you look on transfer mark, when you look on transfer mark, he's had 30 appearances this season, 21 goals, two assists. Now that's a better, he, he, he's scoring more goals than, than Kai Havertz, a player that I've said I don't rate. I don't rate Kai Havertz as a goal scorer. I think he scored 12 or 13 goals this season. For me, not good enough. Then you look at Inketia, somebody that has to, we have to get rid of Inketia. Let's keep it real. And then we have to get rid of, um, we have to get rid of Jesus. They're not, not good enough, in my opinion. I, I want to take Isak. Um, I would take, I would definitely take Isak. Um, I think he'd bang even more goals at Arsenal. I mean, he's, he's banging 21 goals at Newcastle. With all due respect, they're not of the level of Arsenal. Let's just keep it real. So, listen, Isak, 120 mil. Listen, we've got a lot of players that we need to get rid of. In the transfer mark, he's valued at 75 mil. We've got a whole bench we need to get rid of. We can make the money. Why not go out there and get it done? Why not go out there and get this player over the line? I don't think you'd have an Arsenal fan that would complain if Isak comes into the team. And if we add him to, 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 to get over the line to win the Premier League or the Champions League, I'd definitely take uh, Isak. The only problem with Isak is the injuries. He's 24 years old. As I said, he's scoring good goals. I think technically he's a baller. Even for his height, you don't think he's, you wouldn't always expect a player as tall as him to be as technical as he is. I think technically he's sound. He's very good in front of goal. He's definitely um, he's definitely cold-blooded in front of goal. I think he's a great striker. Now, the only thing that people want to use against him is his injuries. That's the only question mark when, when you look at him as a player. The only question mark as to do you spend 120 million to get him over the line is his injuries. When you look at his injuries, this year he's had two groin injuries. The first groin, the last groin injury kept him out for 24 days. The second groin injury kept him out for 30 days. So that's something that, you know, we need to, re you know, do the medicals and, 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 and understand why does he keep getting groin injuries? To be fair, he's only had two in his career. Um, then he had a thigh problem that kept him out for 106 days. So we need to be looking into that because 106 days, I mean, we need him to be available. You spend 120 mil on a player, you need him to be available. You can't be out injured. So we need to look into that. That's the one thing that that holds, you know, um, looks like a problem. When he, In his time at Real Sociedad, he had a hamstring injury and a knee injury, but he was out for way less days. The hamstring was out for 15, the knee problem was out for 11 days. So, you know, we got we got to look into that because we can't get another injury-prone player. I mean, that is the big question mark about Thomas Partey. That's another bad thing against Jesus. So we can't be we can't be spending big money and getting a player that's injury-prone. We need a player that's going to be available, um, you know, knockout stages of the Champions League, knockout stages in the Cup, crunch end of the season. We need him available especially if he's the only striker that we bring in. So, listen, that, that is definitely a problem and something that is um, going to be a strike against him. The thigh problem, the groin pro injuries, 
that's going to be something that's against him. But I think he would absolutely bang at Arsenal. I think he's a top, top player. I would not be angry with Isak. I would be a lot more comfortable getting Isak than getting somebody like a Giocres that I'm still unsure you're going to be able to bang in the Premier League. A lot of people use the fact that he's done it in the Championship. Well, listen, it doesn't necessarily correlate that he's going to bang in the Premier League. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, I would rather go for the more proven player, especially if you're spending there, they're about the same money. Gyokarez is not going to be cheap. None of the strikers are going to be cheap. I much prefer Isak coming to Arsenal than somebody like a Sesko or Gyokarez or Laura Martinez that's also been linked. I'd much rather Alexander Isak. But let me know what you guys think. Would you take Alexander Isak? Is he the striker that you want? Is there another striker that you prefer? Like I said, I'll be more than happy with Alexander Isak coming to Arsenal. And it's normal when you hear a club saying they're not selling the player, the player's happy, the player won't push for a move. Mm -hmm. I've heard that before. You know what I'm saying? I've heard that before and then the player moves. You know what I'm saying? They're always happy until the club comes in. And listen, we should know already how much money Newcastle would part ways with Isak. We should know how much the player wants in wages. We should know already how much the agent fees are going to be. We should already know all of this going into the transfer window because we knew that we needed a striker in January. Let's keep it real. We knew we needed a striker in January. So this ain't nothing new that we needed a striker. So, you know, at the end of the day, get it done. Get it done. Get the player over the line and we need to push on. Um, like I said, this is a player that we've been, there's many players we've been linked to that I don't want, but this is definitely a player that I do want. Um, and listen, I don't understand why Arsenal are taking long, to be fair. I mean, Ivan Tony already come out in the interview saying that he wants to come and we're still moving slow. So I, I just don't, I, I really don't get it. We need an out and out striker. It's time that, you know, Arteta stops getting all these guys that, do everything, all these strikers that are great at everything but goal scoring. Um, and listen, some people may say 120 is too much, but listen, I, I, I will say when we got Declan Rice, when you buy quality and the player bangs and produces, more time people say, you know, we, we, we should have given them more money. And that's what happens when you buy quality. You don't care about the price tag. As soon as you see quality on the pitch, you're like, it's a good purchase regardless of price tag. And if Isak is the player that we identify, we need to we need to just get the player over the line. We're not good at bidding wars. We've lost multiple bidding wars in the past. Arsenal are not a club that does well in bidding wars. So we need to act before our rivals act. Man United need a striker. Chelsea need a striker. You know, so listen, Tottenham may want to get their Harry Kane replacement. They may look at Isak. Richarlison's done decent, but he's he's no Harry Kane. You know what I mean? So not saying that Isak is on the level of Harry Kane, but in terms of a player that, you know, is a great goal scorer, they could look at Isak as an option. So listen, we need to act fast. And that's a problem that we haven't had. When we tried to go for Douglas Louise at the end of the transfer window, we're scrambling. We shouldn't be scrambling. We should not be scrambling. We're in a strong bidding position for the fact that our stuff, we've got a good starting lineup. Uh, the team is, is competing. Like I said, not gotten over the line, but it's competing year in, year out for major honours. It's it's a great time to to do that. There's a lot of players now at the bench, Fabi Vieira, ESR being linked away uh, to other clubs. We've got Flip, we got um, Fabi Vieira being linked away. We've got ESR being linked to West Ham. So we're going to have money coming in, wages freed up as well. Why not go out there and get Alexander Isak? There's no reason why you shouldn't go out there and get him over the line. I just don't understand. Uh, why we wouldn't get an Alexander Isak. Um, and we need to act fast. Like I said, we need to act fast now. We need to change the way we approach the transfer window and we need to address the players. Uh, we need to address the areas of the squad that is is weak, is the weakest. Um, so I would definitely take Alexander Isak. I would be very happy with this signing. And um, I think he would bang at Arsenal. I think he would bang at Arsenal and, and I hope that we do go in for him and I hope we do go we go get him and show that ambition that we want to win the league next season. And if we go and get Alexander Isak with some other signings, like a right winger, um, like another number 10, like a centre-back, a left-back, 
we start looking serious. We start looking that we're being more ambitious and we want to get over the line and, and become champions and not just be contenders every year. Um, so that's that's what I want to see from Arsenal. Make sure you're hitting the like button. Make sure you're subscribing, doing all that good stuff. Make sure you're doing all of that. Road to 20K. We're on the road right now. Make sure you smash that like up every day. Be dropping 15 minutes, 15, 15, 20 minute videos of transfer news. Um, 1 p.m. I'm going to be dropping a live transfer news. Different players been linked to Arsenal. And then another one at 10 p.m. every single day. So make sure you're hitting the bell notification and, and doing all that good stuff. And without further ado, Kadamba, we're out.